Okay. So good morning, guys. Or good afternoon. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, I think okay, you guys can see my screen. Okay. Um, so my name is Dejavu. That's my nickname actually. So and um I'm going to be walking you through um the tool we'll be using for the training. Um that's Figma. So um it's going to be 100 percent practical. Um, no theory, no slides, nothing. So I'm just going to be walking you through the interface itself. So for you to get accustomed to Figma. So yeah, so um, for beginners, like for starters, um, when you're trying to open Figma, you've never opened it before, you can go to the website, that's um, figma.com, and um, you can create an account, if you have an account, and you can log in. So you can open it through the browser, or you can open it through the desktop app. So um, right now I'm using the desktop app. So I, I personally don't like the web browser, but there's no difference to it. There is no much difference to it at all. So whatever rocks your boat, you can use it. You can use whatever rocks your boat. So um, yeah. So the first thing, when you um, open Figma, I'm an old-time user, so yeah. So this is what I have files here. So nothing, nothing really serious here. So, but as a first-time user, you might not see all this here. So the first thing you have to do, um, you have, have to create a new design file. There are different options at the top here. You can create a new design file. You can create a FigJam file. FigJam is for um, UX, for UX um, activities and all. The um, design file is for anything UI-related. Then import file, probably if you have um, a local file saved on your computer, that, that's dot fig. You can import it into Figma here. So um, for now, let's just um, create a new design file here. So you can you can open it via that, via that method, or you can just click on the plus icon up here. So let me just close this one here. You can click on this um, button here, or you can hit Control N to create a new file. Um, so let me just open it from the beginning here, so you see what shows up. And so, um, so once you open a new design file, once you hit Control N, it presents you with two options, which is to either to open a design file or to open a Figjam file. So what we're going to be working on is design file here. So I'm just going to click on this one here. Then it loads up. Um, yeah, so this is what opens up here, a blank canvas here. Nothing doing, nothing inspiring, just a white void. So yeah, so at the top here, we have um, some set of tools. Um, so here we have um, the menu icon here. So we have the menu options here, file, edits, view, objects, text, arrange vectors, and the like. Um, we're not be using this for now, but let me just walk you through the tools here. So under these tools here, um, under this tool panel here, we have um, this set of tools and under each tool we have um, other sets of tools. So anyway, you see this drop down icon here, you, that means you have um, other like more set of tools under each um, icon here. So here we have the move tool. So for the move tool, we just to move around your canvas here, or to move any design elements you have on your canvas. Then under it, we have the skill tool. The skill tool, like the name implies, is just to scale up your elements. Nothing serious, but would, I will show you how to use it. I will show you where this tool comes into um, practice here. So here we have the frame tool. The frame tool is just to create a blank, um, to create a frame where you'll be working on. So once you select the frame tool here, you notice on the right here, we have um, a set of predefined um, devices or the set of the predefined frame sizes here. So we have the phone frame, we have the tablet frame, we have the desktop frame, presentation, watch, paper, social media, Figma community, and archive. So whatever um, frame you want to work with, let's say you want to work with desktop, 
can just click on the drop down here. Then you have other um, sizes here. So let's say I want to work with this desktop size here. I can just select it. Then it automatically creates um, the desktop frame based on the dimension. So yeah. So in Figma, there's something that I don't know if you guys followed um, the last config, the Figma conference. They released, recently released a new set of updates. And um, one of the updates, one of the coolest updates is um, the dark mode. So um, at some point, you might not actually like, some of you might actually like all your apps, all your devices, all your apps in your device dark. So a way to change that is you can just come to the menu icon here, um, then go to preferences, down to team, then select dark. So it automatically changes the UI to dark team. And um, you notice that this canvas here is also is still in light mode. So the way you can do that is deselect the frame. If you're not, just deselect the frame, don't select anything. Then you have the background, um, this thing here, color. So you can just change it to a dark shade. So the color code I use is to see, to see, to see. Yeah, so I have this. So it's just, this is just a side note, nothing, nothing really serious. So back to what I was saying. So once you've created your canvas, um, you have, um, you have um, some options here to the right. I'll still come back to this, but let's continue with the tools here. So for the, here we have um, shapes, the shape tool. So under the shape tool, we have different types of shape. We have the rectangle, the line, the arrow, the ellipse, which is a circle, polygon, that's um, for three sides or more than three sides um, shape. We have the star icon and we have the image icon. This is to import your image. So let's say, let me, for the rectangle, I can just select um, the rectangle tool. The shortcut here is R. So once you hit R on your keyboard, once I hit R, you notice the icon changes to um, a plus icon here. So I can just click and drag on the canvas and it creates, um, you can just click and drag to create whatever shape you want. So let's say I want to work with a box here. So yeah, so this is it here. So if I want to create a circle, the shortcut for that is O, O on your keyboard. You notice the icon changes to the circle icon here. So I can just click and drag here, then once, if you're trying to create a shape, make sure you hold down shift so it scales proportionally. If you don't hold down shift, you have a wobbly shape just like this. And you don't want this. You don't want this to happen. So you want to, you want to hold down shift and scale. So it scales proportionally. Let me do that again. Or then hold down shift and scale. So that's for that. Then for the pencil, this is the pencil here. And if you use Photoshop, you know what the pencil is for. It's just for freehand drawing. Nothing really serious here. Just if you're trying to create illustrations or whatever, you can use the pencil for that. Then click enter. Then under the pencil, we have the pencil tool. You might not really use this much. This is also for freehand. Nothing really doing here. You might not use this much. So I'm just going to delete this. Then it, after the pencil, we have the text to here. For the text to normal, just to create your text layer. Um, let's say this is a Figma tutorial. tutorial. So just place aside. So this is what your text to does. Uh, simple and straightforward. Then after the text to, we have the hand to. The hand to is just to move around your canvas, just like the move to here that we have here. So the hand tool is just something, um, just click and drag and move around. Nothing serious. And then right here we have the comment tool. So we all know Figma is a collaborative tool, right? So we can work with teams. We can work with teams. We can work with the um, uh, number of people. So let's say you're working with someone else on the same file and you want to point someone to a particular element or a particular error on your Figma file. 
you can just select the comment tool here. Shortcut is C on your keyboard. So once that's selected, notice the icon changes to the comment icon here. So just move to wherever you want to comment on. Let's say I want to comment on this text here. This is a Figma tutorial. I can just move there and click on it. And it brings up this pop-up here. So I can add a comment and say, okay, um, this should be in small letter. I can add icon, probably, well, I say icon, M emoji, just like you have on WhatsApp on or any other social media to products. So I can just select this, then it updates. Then I can ask the person, let's say I'm working with 10 people on a particular project, and I want this comment directed to one person. I can just ask the person here and just say, okay, um, um, some, some two, triple. So once I ask the person, I can click on send. So the person gets updated in his or her email that, okay, someone else has tagged you, you were tagged in the comments on a Figma file, then the person can open it from his own end and view the comments as well. So right to the right here, we have the list of comments here. So once the comment has been resolved, let's say I already have um, probably the person has fixed the correction, changed it to small letter. The person can click on this resolve icon here. So this resolve icon is just to remove the comments, this particular comment from the right hand side here. So once I click on resolve, you notice the comment is gone, but it's not totally gone per se. It's not totally gone per se. So GV, let's say you want to revert back to that particular comment, you can just come to this icon here. Then this icon to the right here. Make sure you your comments um so your comments icon is selected. Then come to the right here to this icon. Then click on it. Show result comments. Then you have your result comments here. So it's not as if it's gone per se. It's still there, but it's hidden. So that's for that. Um, to the top here, we have um, four set of tools here. Um, so the first one here is to edit. So let's say I don't like this um, shape here. I can just click on the edit here. I can click and drag the edges. Just click and drag the edges here. Just like if you work with Illustrator, you should know how this works. Then I can click on done or click on enter and hit enter on the keyboard. And um, the other icon here is um, components, to create the components. Um, along the way, we thought what this components is for, like you make use of comp you're making use of components when you're designing. You need components are just reusable elements for your UI designs. So if you have, if you notice that you're going to be reusing, reusing um, some elements on your design, on your projects, you can just create the components for them and just click copy and paste, copy and paste and all. So the next tool we have here is the mask tool. So the mask here is just to, let's say I'm trying to um, mask an image. Well, let me use the shape. Let me change the color of this shape here. So I want to mask this circle with this shape here. So I can select the two of them, then click on mask. Then you notice the circle is inside the shape. So if I move outside the border of that shape, the initial shape, the rectangle here, you notice it gets cut off. So that's the essence of the mask too. You can also mask your images as well inside the um, shapes. So then to the right here, you notice there's an icon here. So the, this icon is just to show whoever is on that particular file. So if you have more than one person on the particular file, it shows up here too as well. So if you have four people, on the file, it shows four icons here, four profile pictures here. So here we have the share button. The share button is just a share um, link with, um, just a share link with your, with anybody on the internet, anyone. So there are two ways you can send an email to the person or you can copy the link. 
So yeah, just request for the person's email. Let's see, Brahman. Then I can just send invites. So once I I can set what I want the person to do, like the access I want the person to have. I want the person to have probably I want the person to be able to review. I can set it. If I want the person to edit, I can set it so as well. So I can send invites. The invite gets sent to the person. The same thing, it shows on the person's email. Then the person can open the file from his or her email. Another way is you can copy the link. So once you copy the link, you can paste it wherever you want to send it to, wherever you want to send it to. So that's another way. So, and um, here, the play button is just for prototypes. You play your prototype. You, along like in, in coming weeks, you would be taught prototype how to prototype your design. So I'm not going to touch that for now. Then here you have just the scaling feature here. Just scaling. So you want to zoom in, zoom in, zoom out, zoom out, um, zoom to fit the canvas. So those are the options we have here. And um, yeah, so um, let me walk you through. Let's say I want to create um, a sign-up form. I'm going to create a sign-up form. So nothing serious. I'm just going to create a simple mobile login page, or a, let's say login or sign up form. Yeah. So a mobile screen. So as I'm designing, I will just be showing you around the different tools as well. So I'm just going to delete all this. So like we said, remember how to create a frame. Click on the shortcut F. You get presented with different frame sizes. I said earlier, I want to create a mobile login screen. So I click on um, the phone drop down and um, I can select whichever device I want to um, design on. I'll go with iPhone 13 mini. So yeah, I've created a frame. To the right here, we have different sets of um, up, um, properties here. So at the top here, we have the align, um, the alignment um, features here. So I will talk about that when we're designing. So um, the first thing I want to do when creating um, a sign-up form, let's say I want to ideally create a grid. So for a mobile device, I create a grid. So I to create a grid, just select the mobile frame, then come down here to layout grid. Click on the plus icon. And, um, I don't want to use grid, I want to use columns. So I can just click on the icon here, this um, icon here, click on it to change the settings. Then I change um, the option from grid to columns. So yeah, you notice on the mobile frame, we have um, some red lines here, some red box here. So for my mobile device, I make it of two columns. So I can just change this to from five to two counts. Press enter, changes to two columns. Then I don't like this red color. It's kind of distracting at all. So I can just change the color of this, my column settings here. I can just change it to something like this. So there's a color code I make use of. So B is B is B is. Yeah, so I can still see it. I can still see it, but it's not distracting. So the opacity, this is just to change the opacity of the color of the column. So I'm just going to leave that thing. Then the stretch type, just let me let me change this to where so you see what is happening here. Yeah, so stretch type is just um you wouldn't really make use of this per se, but yeah, just have that in mind. Then um let me change this to be as so you don't get confused. So same. Then margin. So margin is just the distance between the edge of your frame and um, where you want to, um, the edge of your frame and your next element. So let's say um, I don't want my design to be close to the edge. I don't want it to be close to the edge like this. So I make use of 16 or 24. Now you notice the distance between the edge and the column here. So that's what the margin is for. Distance between the edge and um, the beginning of your design. 
So gutta is just the distance between the two columns here, the middle here. That's what gutta is. So let's say I want the gutta to be 16. You notice it's shrinking. Let's say I want it to be eight. It keeps on shrinking. So I'm just going to make it as 16. Yeah. So that's my layout grid. Um, yeah. So now the first thing I want to do is um, I want to create a text, a text that says um, welcome back. So just it's um, a login form, Jamie. welcome back. So like I said, um, just got to create a text to select text to, you can come up here and just select the text to, or you can hit C on your keyboard and just click on the frame. And yeah, so you have this here, so you can type in whatever what, whatever you want to type in. Let's say, welcome back. Now, this is too big for me. For a mobile screen, this is too big. So I can reduce the size by coming to the text properties here, down here to the right. So let's say um, I can make it of 32, font size or 24, yeah. Um so please excuse, sorry to interrupt you. Um, please, can you like change your editor to light mode? And um, please, can you okay. slow down a bit? They are saying you're too fast. Okay, okay, no problem. Um, let me change my... Okay. So um, I'm going to be slow. Like I, I don't want to take too much time. So, but yeah, let me just reduce my case. So, um, where did we? Start? Okay, yeah. So, um, the fonts. I reduce the font size. You now. One thing you would notice is I'm making use of a particular set of numbers. 16, 24, 8, 32, and all. Now, the reason I'm making use of that is. Um, there's something called grid system. So there are different kinds of grid system. The popular ones are majorly four point grid system and eight point grid system. But right now I'm making use of the eight point grid system, which can also be the four point grid system sharp. So yeah, so I'm making the figures I'm making use of are multiples of eight. So that's why I'm making use of number, numbers like. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and all. Along the way, you get to understand that, but let's continue. Now, I don't like this font. I don't like this font. I want to change the font to something different so I can come to the text property here. Click on the drop down, and um, it shows the list of the fonts you have installed on your desktop here. So let's say I want to make use of man loop. I can just type M A N. Then I have man loop here, so I can just select it. So that's a way to change your font. And um, let's say like this font is too thin for me. For a header, it's too thin. So I can change the style to let's say bold now you know there are some fonts that might not have all these um, options here so take note of that some fonts might not have all these options here some fonts some fonts might just have regular and um, bold finish it's something i usually avoid i mean it's, it's good to have different um fonts variation style variation and all so for a header i want this to be bold this is my heading text i want this to be bold so I'm just going to select bold here. Then right here, this is just line height. So for line heights, when you're trying to, let's say you have um, a paragraph text. Let's move this to regular. So let's say I have something like a line of text. Let me just make this of this. Yeah. So for line heights here, line height is just the distance between the first line and the second line just is the difference between the lines like um, the distance between um, your lines of text here so let me show you what it's let me show you how it works so let me just change this to 32. you notice the size increases 
M changes to 56, the size increases. So there's a formula I use for this. I, the formula is just my font size times two. So let's say 16 times two. Yeah, that's the formula I use for my line height. So line height is just to, to um, encourage readability. If you have line, if you have text that chunked up like this, it will be too hard to, for users to actually read. So you want to make use of um, very, you want to space out your text here. So that's how line height work. Let me delete this. Then the next option we have here is letter spacing. So letter spacing is just distance between each word here. Um, each letter here. So let's say I increase this. You notice the distance between um, each letter here increases. I reduce it, it reduces. So I'm just going to leave it as zero. Yeah. So that's that for you. This one might not really use it like that. So just skip it. Yeah. So um, now not to waste too, much, waste too much time. Let me just create the sign up form for you. So let's say we have welcome back here. And um, I want to create a subheading as a caption, rather, I want to create a caption. I reduce the font size to 16. Then another, another formula I use to select font style is whenever you're trying to create um, a header and um, a caption directly under it. From if my header is bold, my caption for my caption, I usually skip a font width. I, I skip a font width and select the next one below it. So if this is bold, for this one, I'm going to skip semi bold and select medium here. So that's that. I'm skipping for, for the header here, we have bold, but for the caption here, we have medium. So I'm skipping semi bold here. It's just to encourage, um, just to distinct the header from the caption. So that's another way you can do that. Uh, so let me just change this to please sign into your accounts. So now this is too close for me. I can, um, I want to create space in between the header and um the caption here. So I can just click and drag down like this, or I can use my arrow button. Click and just arrow button down. And if you want to increase it by a large amount, you can hold down shift. So it increases by a large amount here. So yeah, that's for that. So I created um eight point spacing between the header and the body here. So to, to um, if you want to know the spacing between your element, just click on a particular element. Let's say this text, then hold down, hold the Alt key or the Option key on your Mac. Hold down the Alt key, then highlight. Just hover on the um, elements you want to compare it with. So let's say I want to compare it with this um, header here. I just select the text here. Hold down. Out, then hover on the header here. Let's say I want to compare it with this. Um, I want to compare the distance here. I want to check the distance between the edge here and this text. Hold down Alt key and just hover on the frame. So it shows the number here. 24 here, 131 here, then 129. Yeah, so that's for that. So um, the next thing I'm going to create is um, a text field, a text field. So yeah, I'm not going to go there. Let me just, let me create something here. So let's say email, email address. That's for, that's a text field here. Just going to place it here. Now there's a feature in Figma that allows you to um, create, um, uh, what they call it now? Auto, there's an auto layout feature basically in Figma. So that lets you create containers. 
So containers help developers in whenever they are coding their, whenever they are trying to implement your design. So it's helpful when you're, it's helpful to use auto layout. Auto layout is very, very in-depth. So it's something you may have to read, watch YouTube videos and understand. It's not something you might understand with one video, you watch videos on it. So um, to create an auto layout frame, instead of grouping, you create an auto layout frame. So now for this text field, I'm going to create an auto layout frame here. So to create an auto layout frame, there's a shortcut for that. So the shortcut is Shift A. Now you notice when I created this auto layout frame, before I created it, look at the look at the layers panel here. It's still recognizing it as a text here. So once I create the auto layout, it changes to a frame. So inside the frame here, you have the text. So the text is inside this container. So yeah, so that's for the auto layout. So I'm just going to click and drag here, then give it a few color. Now for this few color, and to the right here, you have this few option here. So just click on the plus icon here, then click on the color palette here loads of the color um, interface so i'm just going to select like um a grayish kind of yeah so this is okay now okay this is this text is too close to the top for me so i'm just going to increase the distance of the top and the bottom i'm going to increase the distance so i can just let me not let me not make use of what the layout is <laughs> something that is kind of in depth. So I'm just going to click and drag this up, then center it here. Sorry, here, like so. So this font size is too big for a text field. So I'm just going to reduce this to let's say 12. Yeah, 12 should be okay. And um having black, having black on a gray this thing on a grayish background is kind of off for me. I don't really like it, personal preference. So I'm just going to change this to something like this, yeah. So now for this, I'm, I can create a rounded corner for this, my text field. If you notice, this is, this is having a sharp corner here. So let's say I want to create a rounded corner for my text field, I can just select it then come to the top here where you have the frame properties you see the corner radius so just enter and um, let's say i want it to be 16 border radius okay 60 you notice the curve um it appears as a curve here but this curve is too is too much for me so i'm just going to reduce it to say 18 yeah yeah, it seems okay for me. Now you notice that I'm designing within the constraints of this my column here. Now that is the essence of column to have uniform spacing between um for your design. You notice 24. I have a distance of 24 here, then distance of 24 here. So that's the essence of this column here, just to guide you in your design. So you won't go, you won't be creating irregular designs in terms of um spacing and all. So that's for my email field. Then the next field I want to create is um, password field. So this is my password field here. Then the distance between the email field and the password field, I can make it 16 or eight. Let me make it eight. 16 is okay. 16 is okay. <clears throat> So that's for my um, email and text field. Now, in your um, in your mobile um, sign up field, let's say if, um, there are some features. There are some um, there are some things you need to have on your login um, screen. He gets like just to aid user experience. So let's say a user forgets his or her password, you can also fix in a text link into this frame. So for that. I'm going to create um, a forgot password text here. Yeah, so forgot password. 
So um, now, another thing you should note is, please, personally, this is my personal bias. I don't, I, I, I don't make use of pitch black color. I don't make use of pitch black color for my text. So I can just make use of gray here. Just something off. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be pitch black like that. So I can just align it here. Okay. So for the password. Yeah. So the distance between this forgot password and the password field, let's make it um, 16. I hope you remember how we did, how, how we are measuring the distance, how these numbers are appearing. So O down alt, then over over the um, elements you want to compare it with text field over on it, then it shows the distance from the text to the text field, 16. Distance from the text to the frame, 24. So take note of that. So that's for God's password. Uh, and um, let's create um, our CTA. That's our call to action button. So let's, that's the sign in button. So um, let's see, sign in. Then now this is where the align tool comes in. You remember I said we have the align features here. So this align feature is just, this align um, icon is here just to align your elements to the frame, to wherever you want it to be on the frame. So right here, this is aligned left. So it's aligned to the left here. This is aligned center. It's aligned to the center here. This is aligned right. So it aligns it to the right here. Aligned to the top. Right and top. This is where it comes up. Then to the center. Horizontal, is this horizontal? <laughs> so it aligns here, then down here, it aligns here. So that's how the align, um, that's how this alignment property work here. So left, middle, right, top, center, bottom. Again, left, center, right, top, center, bottom. So right now, I want to align this to the center vertically. This is vertical, yeah. I want to align this to the center vertically so I can just click on this second icon here. Oh, horizontal, mm, interesting. So I just click on it, then it aligns to the center here. Then click and drag it to let's say up here. So now remember how we created our auto layout. So for buttons, you make use of anything, you don't group. Now, that is one mistake people usually make. And that's how I started out. <laughs> so I, I usually create, um, I usually use rectangles to create my buttons and my text field and all. So please don't group, mix of auto layout. Create a frame, create a frame. Along the line, you see the reason why we need to, the, the essence of creating frames. So remember how we created our auto layout frame, shift A. So we have these borders here. So it changes to this. So yeah, I can just click and drag like so, or I can um, create um, distance between the edges here by hovering on this, um, I, this, do you see there's a red line here that highlights the number. So you can just click on it. Then it shows you the padding choose the padding um, distance between the text and the, con the edge of the container. So I'm going to say, let's make this 140, 156. So yeah, that's the left padding. The left padding has 156. Then for the right padding, let me make it 156 as well. So you notice they are equal distance here. So we have 156 here, we have 156 here. So now this is too big for me. Like I said, we have to design within the constraint of these columns here for uniform spacing, because it's looking out of space, out of, it's looking out of, um, the visual is not balanced. So you have to make sure it's within the column here. 
So I can just reduce the size of this. Let's make this 132. Let's make this 132. Yeah, you can leave it like this as long as it's within the constraints of the column. So, or you can just hold down Alt and Command on your keyboard and click and drag. So it creates equal distance between the two, um, for the two sides here. So I'm just going to center it. Then I notice it's not looking balanced. It is actually 24, it should be 24 too as well. Yeah, so just going to, yeah. So I'm going to give this a few color. Let me give this, um, remember how we fix in the fill color for our button. So go to the fill property, click on the plus icon, then click on the color palette, then give it, let's give it like, um, which color should we use? Let's make it of blue. Let's make it of blue. So now this is where contrast coming. Now you notice this is too hard to read. Your sign up, your sign in text being black and a blue color, it's, make, it's making it difficult for me to actually read what is here. So you want to build contrast, make keep notes of that. So I'm going to change this to white. Yeah, something like this. Now remember, this is too close to the edge for me. The text is too close, close to the top and bottom of the button. So I'm just going to click on the frame and just hold down Alt and Command, then click and drag. So, yes. So remember, we have round corners here. You, you don't want to create rounded corners for your text field and create a sharp corner radius. For your button, the visual balance is going to be off. So you want to make sure they are consistent. So if you have sharp corners for your buttons, you want to make sure your text field have sharp corners. Well, probably I just make sure they are all consistent. And there are means to these rounded corners too as well. So you can read up on that. But for starters, the rounded corners, like if you have rounded corners like this, they are just trying to convey a sense of um, friendliness, playfulness to the product you are building. If you have sharp corners like this, they are trying to convey a sense of um, formality, like a formal kind of um, um, feeling. So that's that. So I want to make this rounded corner. So this is eight. I'm going to make this one to eight. So remember how we did that, eight. So that's for that. So we have our text field, the forgot password and um, our city. So this stands, remember, eight points grid system. That's what I'm using. So multiples of eight, eight, 16, 32, 40, 48. So 40, 48, 40. Yeah, so let me make use of 32 here. Yeah. So now it's not compulsory for you to make use of a few color here. It's not compulsory. You can change it to stroke, whatever rocks your boat. So instead of having few color here, you can turn off this few using this eye icon here. So you can turn it off here, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. So let's say you want to make it of stroke. You don't want to make it of few. You turn it off, then come to the stroke property here. Click on plus, then you have the stroke here. Remember, pitch black, I don't like pitch black. It's too, somehow for me, sharp. So I can just make use of a um, light shade, like a gray color here. So yeah, so that's for that. And um, now for your, in terms of user experience, you have to create multiple options for your user to either create an account or to sign up um, or to log in. So by, creating by um, providing multiple options. I mean, probably signing in through social, like Google, Facebook, or Instagram, or any other thing. So let's say you want to create that. Let's make this of or sign or continue with. So I'm just going to align this to the center. Remember, <clears throat> this alignment 
icons here, align horizontal centers. Yeah. So continue with, um, let's see Google. Now you don't want to make use of text, just text alone. Now there are different ways you can bring in icons. You can make use of plugins. You can make use of community files. You can make use of, you can download icons online as well. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to walk you through um, how to use plugins and all. So if you want to, let's say you want your users to continue with Google, you can just, um, let's say you want to make use of the icon. You can come to, um, where is, personally, I go, I just right click on the interface here. All these ones are long process. Just right click on the interface here, then come down to plugins. These are my list of plugins. All your plugins are here, here. The installed plugins. So if you want to install a plugin, just come to browse plugins in community. So again, right click plugins, scroll down, come to browse, com browse plugins in community. So click on that and it opens the community interface for you inside of Figma. So this is where the magic happens. This is one of the selling points of Figma here. So you can search for community files. You can search for plugins, whatever, um, whatever you want. So for now, we're focusing on plugins. So there are different kind. There are different plugins for icons. There is Feather icons. Um, there is um, Phosphor, whatever. So let me make use of Feather icons. So let's say I want to install Feather icon. I just search Feather. Icons search. So it shows me the list of um, plugins related to my search. I've installed this already. So let me uninstall it. So I'll show you how to install. So you can click on it just if you want to view the details. You want to view the details, click on it. Then you can install. So just click on this button here, install. It doesn't take too long installed. So come to your Figma file, go to plugins, then you see feather icons here among your list of plugins. So that's a way to install icon, um, plugins on your Figma. So feather icons, you can launch the plugin. It takes a while to load. So let's just chill for a while. Um, So if, if you don't want to mix of plugins, you can you can um, go through, you can come to the community and just search for um, community files, Figma files. There are, there are a lot of icon um, community files here. There is um, um, icon sacks, icon sacks. So yeah, Google sacks, this is it. So just open it. Then click on duplicates. Once you click on duplicates, it opens the it opens the file for you in a new tab. It's a lot of icons, like a vast um, variety of icons, um, styles, and all. So yeah, our our plugin has loaded here. So let's say Google. Google here. I can search for Google. Yeah, that's the thing. Some plugins don't have, some plugins might not have some of these icons. So let me just make use of community files here. Or let me just, let's make use of Facebook share. Yeah. Facebook, feather icons, launch. I think they should have Facebook here, yeah, Facebook. So just click. Then um, it automatically drops it on your file here. Close it. Click and drag. Make sure it's inside the frame. Now, that is one mistake my, people might make. On your layers panel here, some of your elements might be outside the frame. Now, you want to avoid that. As it is right now, it's outside the frame. So whenever I, if I export this frame here, I'm not seeing this icon because it is not inside this frame. So you want to make sure whatever you are, um, your elements 
are inside the frame. So you can just click and drag into the frame. And there you have it. So just align it to um, Facebook. So you can, um, you can adjust the stroke of your icons by holding down control and clicking on the icon. So to the right side, you have the stroke properties activated. So you can change the stroke width. Say, let's make it 0 0.5. Yeah, or you can make it of one. So you can change the color too as well. If you want red or you want Facebook blue. I don't know the look, I don't know their text code. Oh yeah, let's make it some black. <clears throat> so yeah, you want to align this. Make sure it's aligned. Continue with Facebook. So you can auto layout this. Please, always make it a frame. Don't group. I'm telling you this now so that it won't be hard for you in the future. Always auto layout your um, elements. Do not group. So shift A, remember, <clears throat> auto layout. So click and drag. I want to make this long. Click and drag the edge. Make this long. This is the thing with this track part. Click and drag. Now you notice it's constrain, it's um, locking it, this thing to the left. So as I'm dragging here, I want it to be aligned to the center. I don't want it to move. So as I'm dragging it, it's constraining itself to the left here. And I don't want that. That is because of this photo layout um, feature here. It's aligned to the left. I want it to be aligned to the center. So I just click on the center here, then boom. Now, this is still looking off. Okay, 116. Now that's because of the padding. Remember, padding. So this is 116 here, and this is having zero here. So I want to have equal space in here, 16, 16. So it aligns to the center. Then to the top and bottom, I want to have space in between this. I want to have spacing. So let's make this of um, 48. Yeah, 48 is too much. 16. It's, yeah, it is okay. So make this eight two as well. Yeah, so I can give this a stroke because I don't want to distract the attention of my users from this button here. This is a primary CTA. This is what I want them to click on. So this is this is another option. It's not something that is primary, primary. So this is another option. So I can just make this a stroke instead of a few. So I can make this a stroke here, then give this light shade. And remember, rounded corners, rounded corner, rounded corners. This should be rounded corners soon. So it's. Yeah, then you can have other options too as well. If you have, if you want um, Google, you can put in your Google here. Bring in your Google icon. Now this is a community file I told you about. So you have a number of icons here in community file. So you can use whatever that works for you. So I don't know if we here. Yeah, okay, this is Google. So I can just copy and paste here. Now this is the beauty of auto layout. It doesn't affect the size of this, but it's it um, places the icon within the constraint of this um, frame here while maintaining the spacing. Because if you are grouping, you still have to adjust the size, the spacing and all. But in auto layout, auto layout is like a smart feature. It's like an AI that detects the spacing. So it's just, it works like AI, basically. So you don't need to be adjusting the sizing that, okay, ah, this is 16, you now drop it changes to eight, you now start adjusting to 16. No, auto layout just automatically picks it up that, okay, the spacing between each element in this frame is 16. So whatever I place inside this frame should maintain that spacing. 
So this is the Google icon here. I'm going to delete this Facebook icon, delete, then change the stroke of this to one. Remember color, one F, one F. So I can come to the stroke here, copy the color code here, control C, come to the icon here, highlight it, control V, enter. There you have it. So we have our, um, I wouldn't really call it hi-fi, I mean, it's just skeleton, but yeah, this is just a basic login form, a basic login form and um, continue, yeah, just a basic login form, so you don't have to, is this aligned? Yeah, so, so that's just, um, that's just a run through of, um, some of the tools in Figma. And if you want to export your free, yeah, that's another thing I forgot to add. To so export your free, select your free, make sure your frame is selected. You can rename it if you want to, just double click on the frame name here, or you can come here, double click, then say sign up, I'll be signing, Let's enter. Then come down here to the right hand side, scroll down, Hit the plus icon on exports. Here we have different resolution settings. So one X is to maintain the same dimension here, 375 by 812. Two X is your dimension here times two. So we have presets here, Sha, three X, four X, and also whatever you select is times the number. So if you have 400 here times 375 by 812 and you select four X, that's this dimension times 4x. So your frame is going to be large when you export it. So you have that in mind. And it also increases in size. So here to export, we have different formats. We have the PNG format, the JPEG format. PNG is just without background. JPEG is with the background. SVG is um, scalable vector graphics. That's, this one is majorly for icons <clears> or <throat> icons shall if you want to if you still want to edit um if you still want to retain that edit feature in another software so you can just click on the svg then pdf we all know what pdf is all, is all about and yeah so i want to export this as um jpeg so export signing then export to wherever you want to export to and you, there you have it so that's just it's here. So if you have any question, please, I'll be glad to take them. <laughs>